Jamal Williams, uh, hiphopgamershow.com. First of all, say God bless you both. Thank you. Well, man, uh, thank, you. The, thank you. The, the movie was a I'm feeling, I'm feeling that hat. Uh, oh, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> 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 that was a little bit of a line today. God bless you both. I got a question for you, Denzel. Um, to honor me, like, to just to be in your presence, to honor me and both of you guys' presence, Ryan, for real. But I didn't know, I don't know what you do, what kind of workout you do. But the action that you did in that movie, the, the fighting, everything, like, what do you do to keep your body so tuned up? And, and what do you train in or something? Like, it was amazing we, seeing we you. Work with, what was this guy? Uh, Olivier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 yeah, Oliver um, Schneider. Yeah, he's, he's Olivier French, Schneider. He's yeah. French guys who you would always want to be with you. You know, the most unassuming guys. And uh, we really had the luxury of time. Uh, a good two or three months while we were over there. In fact, there, there's a fight I have where I crash through the roof or something and start fighting this guy. And then even the fights we do at the, mm-hmm. at the end, we had two or three or four months before wow. we even got to do those fights. Wow. And we, you know, we, I know I did mine. I did mine. <laughs> 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 yeah. And he made them. Your fights were nasty. Yeah, they, they, these guys are really great at making it look real ugly. You know that nice fight in a phone booth kind of feel. You know, and that's yeah. that's that's kind of what you what you what you want. But uh, we had a couple of we had a couple of rounds that we went, which uh, you know I I practically had to wear an adult diaper before. I was <laughs> <laughs> I've seen Hurricane. I, I, I'm a, <laughs> well, I, 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 I love I love you know, Hurricane. Yeah, Hurricane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, well, I love it. I just want to say God bless you guys. It's yeah. amazing. Thank you. Thank you. I want you to know. It hurt in doing the filming, and did you do any research with actual CIA operatives to get this film done? We had a CIA operative on the set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. all the time. Yeah. We, yeah. And, and, and Ryan gave me a black eye. I did. <laughs> yeah, we, we, yeah. There's, there's a scene where I, I reach over to try to choke him when I have the handcuffs on, and he, he we were flying around in the, in the car, and he wasn't actually driving the car. He was being controlled by someone else. So it just happened as I was reaching forward, he was flying back. And pow! And that, that was my early retirement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I must have too much. I actually I tried probably don't hold bad as he possibly could. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I know, but you, you, that first look you gave me after it happened, I just. Uh, it was uh, a real look. Yeah, <laughs> it, 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 it was weird to feel my face on fire. Yeah. No, it was strange. Yeah. I, I'd never had a black eye in my life. Yeah, you know, but uh, can't say that anymore. No. I'm glad I was the first. Yeah. <laughs> if it was going to be anybody, it was an apologetic Canadian. <laughs> I have a question um, for Denzel and also uh, another question for Ryan. Um, Denzel, you, in the production, as you said that rather than heavily, um, you know, consulting with a lot of CIA operatives or former CIA operatives, you actually felt it was better to research um, sociopaths. Mm. And I was wondering, what did you learn from your research that um, helped you portray this character in terms of the primary motivation? Because it's sort of a mystery why he did what he did in terms of, you know, selling things. There's a book called The Sociopath Next Door. And uh, I I thought, you know, most sociopaths were violent. In fact, they aren't. Uh, but almost all sociopaths want to win, no matter what. Some sociopaths use pity. Oh, woe is me. I mean, I just can't, I just can't do it like you. And then you go, oh, no, no, you're all right. Now I already got you. Now I got you in a weak position and feeling sorry for me. Or, uh, I read about one sociopath who was actually a, a psychologist. And she would, she was so sick. There's this other psychologist that she hated, and she had a nicer car than the other woman. So she would purposely park her car next to the other woman's car just to make her feel bad every day. I mean, just that that sick. She was working with one of the other, with this other psychiatrist patient, and all the work that this woman had done, she destroyed. She brought the person in the room and just destroyed it. They just want to win. There was one sociopath who would steal things in the post office and then get there the next day because he just loved the chaos that it created. He wanted to see how everybody 
was trying to figure out what it was, and he knew that he was, I guess it's a feeling of power. So I, I, I just took that to, to, to I, in, in my journal as I was writing, going through the script, going through, the, as we were shooting, I had to find a way to win every situation, no matter what. Like there's a scene we talking about earlier in the, uh, uh, at, the, uh, at the football game, the soccer stadium. He's willing to even act like a scared little girl, you know, to get away, and then he turns around and kills a couple people without giving away too much. But he'll do anything, a sociopath will do anything to win, anything. What's the most important thing you learned um, as you've been doing films that helped you in terms of producing RIPD? Oh, um, well, I think just sticking with something, you know, that, that was a movie that I've, I've been with for years and, and uh, believed in, and, and uh, you know, just to, just to be standing on the set was, a, was an incredible feeling. We actually wrapped uh, yesterday at 4 in the morning, so uh, um, I'm a little slurry right now uh, because of that, but uh, no, you just stick, being passionate about something, just sticking with it is, is, uh, is really half the battle, you know, and, 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 you know, showing other people why it is that you believe in something. So. Denzel. And I have a question for Brian, too. You take on two of my phobias in this movie, claustrophobia and being underwater, the waterboarding scene and getting into that trunk of that car. Wow. So what do you remember about shooting those scenes? Were you scared at all? Was there like a safety thing just in case it got too close? Uh, no. I would, I'm, I'm not claustrophobic. And I'm going to give it away, but... The car wasn't moving, <laughs> <laughs> and I knew how to get out. <laughs> uh, but no, I didn't, it didn't bother me, and the, the, the waterboarding was close to real, and, uh, and I really wanted to get into it, you know, and uh, to see what it felt like. It doesn't feel good. <laughs> You'll give up the answers. <laughs> that was the most disturbing thing I've yeah, ever yeah. seen. Watching him be waterboarded was really disturbing. Yeah, it was tripping. It was tripping. I wanted to... I wanted to you know, see what it really feels like, and, uh, and I did. So you came close to losing consciousness or your breath, or? Uh, I got caught up, in, you know, because once you get caught with an in-breath, the water keeps coming, and then you're, you're in trouble, you know, then you try to hold your breath, but the water's coming, and they're filling up your mouth, and, you know, you'll give up the answers. And Ryan, did you really drive the car at all? Were you doing any of that driving? Oh yeah, lots of it, lots of it. Um, uh, some of the, the crazier stuff, it, it, it's actually, what's odd about the driving the car, the sequence of driving the car is that when I'm driving the car, it's actually much less terrifying for me than when we have a pilot guy that's on top of the car for some of those scenes, and he'd have that car on two wheels. And Daniel, our director, who's sitting in the wheel well beside me, you know, giggling like a little schoolgirl <laughs> and just yelling faster, faster, faster. He can't see anything. And I find out later that Daniel's never driven a car before in his life. <laughs> right. So he doesn't drive. Yeah. So, you know, being, being in that position was, was crazy because I would hit, we would head headlong for, you know, a brick wall and I would hit the brake and the guy up top would hit the gas. You know, so it was, uh, that was a very strange strange feeling. I've never been in a situation like that. I've never seen a rig like that for a car. Mm -hmm. So, and this is a professional driver up top and he just, he just knows the way to the car. At least that's what you like to believe when he's doing it, you know. And this guy knows what he's doing. But that was, um, that stuff was pretty intense. You know? Hi, uh, this is for Denzel. Um, I was wondering, uh, years ago you did the Cry Freedom. You played Steve Biko. And I was wondering uh, what kind of uh, perspective you had on the way things have evolved in the post-apartheid era in South Africa, having shot this movie in South Africa? Uh, when we shot Cry Freedom, uh, I wasn't even allowed in South Africa. They told me they told me I could come, but I wasn't going to leave. So I had heavy death threats at that time. Uh, so we shot in Zimbabwe. Uh, in 1995, uh, I had the... the privilege and the honor to, to meet Desmond Tutu and, and, and Nelson Mandela the same day. I had breakfast with Desmond Tutu and lunch with Nelson Mandela in the same day and, uh, and then had the good fortune to have Mr. Mandela actually come to my house in California. So th th there's been a tremendous amount of change. You know, you have a whole other generation, you know, from from... What, what, when did he get up? 91, 89, 90? You know, so you got 20 year olds that don't even 
that heard about it. You know, I, I saw this show on television, and they were talking about South, South Africa now, and you had kids with like valley accents, you know, because of the internet and because of the information age that we're in, they're, they're exposed to so much more. Uh, at the same time, I saw a lot of the, still saw a lot of the psychological damage. I met a woman there, a very, very fair-skinned woman who was interestingly enough studying psychology. And she lived in an area, oh, was it Seabreeze, sea, sea, somewhere? Oh, yeah, 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 it was there. Yeah, yeah, over there by the coast. And her mother was black, her father was Jewish, and her mother had to act like she was the maid, when in fact she was married, and on a sea crest, I think it was called, yeah. to live in that neighborhood. They kept the charade up for 20 years, and, that she, she was the maid. Now imagine the damage, the psychological damage it did, not only to her, but to her daughter. You know, that seeing her mother have to act every day like a maid in order to get into the house, and then once they got into the house, it was the quote-unquote normal family. So there, was, there will be, there will continue to be psychological scars for years to come. I mean, but Cape Town is like, Santa Monica on steroids. It's one of the most. <laughs> it is. It's one of the most beautiful towns you, you've ever seen, but but it's still set up the old way. You go ten miles inland, where the where the where the townships are, and they're still there, and they, they are helping to build some of them up. It was also interesting talking to an elderly man who built a nice house for himself in the township. It's like, well, why, why, don't, why are you living out here in the township? Why don't you, like, move toward the beach? And he says, oh, no, I don't trust these people. He <laughs> said, they might, they might change their mind, you know. But they, they, they were, he was also more comfortable there. He was used to being there. That's where he grew up. And I was surprised in, the, in, the, in, the, in, in Langa, you know, you think it's all just slum. And, it, you know, they had three and four bedroom homes on, on an acre of land. It's just that was the the area where they were allowed to live, so people decided to stay there. Lang is one of the oldest townships. Townships, yeah. In South Kyle, Africa. Yeah, it was the other one, Kyalisha. Kyle yeah, North, yeah. 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 Huge. Huge. Millions. Yeah. Huge. Right. Wow. But just teeming with joy, though, too. Like, I mean, you know, the people yeah. there were incredibly happy given the, 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 the horrendous circumstances in which they're living. I mean, you can't. You know, if you're from the United States and you go there, you can't really believe what you're seeing. And, and it's so big, and along it's so big, you know, it's not like you can call 911 and the police show up. So they police themselves. So we were driving back from the set, back to the, to the base camp, and the women were oh, making all those noise, and, and these men were walking around this one guy, he was just walking like this. And, and the guy had a big stick and he was whipping it, but the guy was walking like this. So I asked my driver, uh, 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 I think it was Joseph, uh, Jack, I said, Jack, what are they doing? He said, they're putting him in his place. Mm. Wow. I said, whoa. I said, what do, you, what do you think he did? He says, well, something related to the women. And as he may have messed with a young girl or something. I said, well, why doesn't he run? He said, they'll kill him. He says, if he tries to run, they'll stone him. So it, it, that still exists, you know, but you can get Direct TV. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <it's> not, <laughs> you get everybody loves Raymond. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's the weird thing saying sick to Kardashians. Yeah. In London. <laughs> <laughs> I would have seen some of them over. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> uh, I have a question for, one question for Ryan, one question for Giselle. Uh, Giselle, do you have more fun? playing a bad guy and does it stretch you at, at all as an actor? Um, uh, the next picture I, 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 I made will come out at the end of the year or the beginning of next year. It's called Flight. And I play an alcoholic, drug addicted pilot. And, uh, who crashes a plane, but saved a lot of lives. It, it was the most intense film I've done probably in 20 years. Uh, I guess, you know, it's cliche to say that um, 
bad guy is more fun because you can say anything and get away with anything. You know, sometimes when you're the good guy, you're sort of trapped or like you can't say that. And, you know, and even when you're playing a, a real person, you know, like a, a, a Stephen Beagle or something, you sort of stuck within the, those confines. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <I do> <laughs> um, and, and, uh, um, what was it that attracted you to this script, and how was the experience working with a director that this is his first big American movie? Yeah. Oh, that's one of the reasons I wa really wanted to do the, the, the film. Obviously, the chance to you know, be working with uh, what I think is the greatest actor working in Hollywood today, Denzel. Yeah, that was a <coughs> huge emphasis. But I just love the idea that this guy serves slowly disillusioned, uh, you know, with everything that he believes in. It's the slow disintegration of God and country for him, and that's what sort of means everything to this guy. And watching that be peeled away slowly, you know, measure by measure by, you know, Tobin Frost, who's you know, Dan Bell's playing, and uh, uh, just kind of, you know, feeling that, you know, which is, you know, these, these days, it's what we talked about earlier, you know, what we don't know is more terrifying than what we do know, and uh, so much goes on uh, behind the scenes that we'll never, ever know about. And, um, I like investigating that kind of that, that world. And, and Daniel Espinosa, to answer that part of the question, is just a truly, I mean, incredibly gifted filmmaker and um, so insightful and a guy who's, you know, he sort of almost acts like a bit of a thug, but he's, you know, he's read every book you can pretty much imagine and he's, uh, you know, seen every film that you can imagine and he's learned from the best and, and uh, 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 that's applied every day to what he does and it really is a craft for him. And uh, I'm excited because, you know, Daniel's a guy that you want to buy stock and, Definitely. Last question. Uh, question for Ryan. Ryan, I'm curious. Your character has kind of a "be careful what you wish for" because you may get it thing mm -hmm. going on. Has that ever happened in your life where you've worked really hard for something and then you're smack in the middle of it, saying, "Oh crap"? Yeah, a lot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you want to start with this morning, or <laughs> you know, um, yeah, of course, you know. But I also have learned, you know, the, the 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 greatest lesson I think I've learned in life is who knows what's good or bad. Um, you know, things come along that you really want and, and they turn out to be the worst thing in the world and, you know, some of the worst tragedies that you can conceive of that could happen to you personally turn into the best things. It's, it's, you know, the exact medicine you need in that moment. So I've learned to have a bit of faith in my, you know, cynical ways uh, these days. And it's, it's, it's softened me, I think, in, in, in all the right ways. So uh, I hope that answers it. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No. <laughs> that was that was crazy.